the perfect scenario is one where you wake up in the morning, you feel good, you have some coffee, you have your breakfast, and you go sit at your desk and you start learning. You know, maybe you're studying physics. So you get your physics book, you get your paper and pencil, you sit down, you read a little bit, and then you attempt some of the problems in the back of the book. If you're taking a physics class, maybe you have some online homework, maybe you can knock out a few problems and have a really good day. Those days where you're motivated and you feel like learning, you really should embrace those days and take advantage of those days and learn as much as you can. You know, if you feel like studying mathematics, then you should definitely study mathematics. But this is the perfect picture. And this is not life. <laughs> we all have days where we wake up and we don't want to do anything. And sometimes that will continue for several days. You might have several days or weeks where you just don't want to do it. I mean, I, I can think of classes that I took in college, math classes, that I absolutely hated. I remember when I took uh, a combined course on combinatorics and graph theory, I just did not like that class. I didn't like the graph theory aspect. I would like the counting aspect, combinatorics, which is the theory of counting. It wasn't until later that I came back to appreciate all of the interesting things that I should have been learning. So in hindsight, you know, I made some mistakes. I should have studied more. I ended up with a B in the class and I probably should have gotten an A if I would have put in the work. So how do you, how do you motivate yourself to learn when you're going through one of these slumps? So in this video, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how you can get yourself to work when you don't want to work. Because if you can do that, you're essentially building discipline. And I genuinely believe that with discipline, you can accomplish a lot, a lot more than you think you can accomplish. Most people can go much, much farther in whatever it is they're trying to learn than they think they can. So let's say you wake up today and you don't really want to study. What are some things you can do to you know, make you want to study? So a simple mental exercise you can do is the following. Let's say it's 9 a.m. and you have to be at work or you have to be in school by noon. So you've got three hours, you've got to eat breakfast, you've got to get ready. Maybe you want to exercise a little bit. So you don't have that much time. You might have some responsibilities. So you've got a, a three hour gap in your day where you have some stuff to do, but you have some study time too. But you don't want to do it because you're just tired or you just don't really want to study. So how do you get yourself to do it? So Think about this. You have to think about the future. Think about later in the day. Remind yourself of all those times where you were motivated and you did want to study. How did you feel afterwards? You probably felt really successful because you probably looked back on that day and you thought to yourself, hey, I did something that day. I was productive. And, and that's really what you want to do. You want to have that mindset where you can look back at the end of your day and say, did I do enough today? Did I do enough? And you want to you wanna have that mindset every day. Every day, you kind of want to look back on your day and say, did I do enough today to accomplish my goals? And if you didn't, that's okay. Just make sure you get after it the next day, right? Just get after it the next day. So in those moments where you feel like you don't want to study, try to have some forward thinking. Think about your future self. You know, later in the day, you are going to look back and you're going to say, oh, I wish I would have studied more. And that's, that is the feeling that everyone gets when they're in class and they fail a test. You know, I've had it before. I remember driving home. Oh, this is a terrible, terrible one. Driving home from my college algebra final exam. I was driving on a highway. I remember, I remember my hand on the steering wheel and I remember thinking, I failed. I, I, didn't, I didn't perform. I didn't do enough. And I remember that feeling. And I failed the test because I didn't understand logarithms. And what could I have done? Looking back, I don't really know. I probably should have worked harder. I thought I was working hard at the time, but apparently I didn't work hard enough. I didn't make it a big enough priority in my life. I didn't study when I didn't want to study. I didn't, I didn't take advantage of those days where I wasn't motivated. I didn't force myself to work when I wasn't motivated. So by looking back at the end of every day and kind of asking yourself that question, did I do enough? 
if you're aware that you're going to have that thought in the future, when you're actually having those feelings of, hey, I don't want to study, you can remind yourself of that fact and say, hey, if I study now, I know that I have done something good that is going to progress my life in a positive way. You know, If you're taking a class, you probably want to study for that class every day. And so by forcing yourself to study, you accomplish your goal. But there's something deeper that happens when you do this. It's, it's, even, it's even more than just the grade. It's even more than just forcing yourself into that uncomfortable position. If you learn to embrace that uncomfortable feeling of learning, if you learn to embrace that struggle, you create what's called discipline. And I genuinely believe that a person who is disciplined and works consistently at anything will beat anyone who just has a lot of talent and just works sporadically. Discipline is the key. And you build that by working through those uncomfortable moments. It's kind of like you embrace it. It's like you, you embrace those uncomfortable periods of learning. You say, I don't really want to study, but I'm going to suck it up and do it anyways because I know I have to study today. And then when you're done, you can look back and then there's that reward. So you have to keep your eye on the prize, right? If you, if you remember that you're gonna have the reward after you push through that uncomfortable moment, it kind of like tricks your brain into, into, into forcing yourself into that uncomfortable place. But you have to have really good reasons. You do. You have to have reasons for wanting to learn. And if, if you don't have those really good long-term goals, if you don't really want to do something, it's okay. I'm not saying you have to want to do something. Some people just aren't that driven. But if you really want something in life, then you can get it. You can get it. You just have to learn to push through those uncomfortable moments. That motivation, that desire to reach whatever goal it is, you know, whether it be learning mathematics, physics, being better at a sport, learning a new language, playing a musical instrument, whatever it is you're trying to do, if you really, really want something, that's going to give you the drive a lot of times to work on those days when you don't want to work. And I, and I believe that discipline, discipline can get you there. If you work consistently on anything every single day, by default, you are working harder than most people. Most people don't work on something every single day. They don't. They don't. They, they'll work on it for, you know, they'll have like really intense periods where they work really, really hard. And then they'll take a couple days off and they'll get derailed and maybe they'll come back to it in a few weeks. Most people go through these phases where they have ups and downs, ups and downs. It's in those downs that you separate yourself. Working when you don't want to work, right? That is discipline. And it's through that consistency and discipline that you get to the next level. You know, I was, I was at the gym the other day and there was this guy there, one of my friends. He's, he's a bodybuilder. The guy's huge. He's huge. And we were talking, he was, he was doing an incline bench press. And he just started talking about, you know, lifting. He's always, he just talks a lot. He's a cool guy. And he was telling me that the most important thing in, in bodybuilding is consistency. You know, you just have to be consistent. You know, on those days when you don't want to go to the gym, you go to the gym, right? It's the same thing with learning mathematics. You know, on those days that you don't want to do math, you just do math, you do it. And again, just remind yourself that there is a reward at the end of the day. Remind yourself that you have an end goal. And by realizing these things, it will help you push through those uncomfortable moments. It will help you actually embrace the feeling of not wanting to study. You know, when you wake up on those days and you feel terrible, maybe you have a slight headache, you're tired, maybe you have some distractions because you had an argument with your friends or your significant other or your family. You know, we all have mental distractions. We all face all kinds of adversity in life. It's those days that separate you from everyone else in some sense, right? Because most people can't perform when things are hard. It's, it's easy to perform when you're motivated. You know, if you go on YouTube and you watch a video and you get motivated or you listen to a song, you're like, oh, this is a great song. Yeah, I want to learn math or yeah, I want to go for a run. You know, motivation is great. It's a great feeling and we should use it. We should embrace it. But when you don't have motivation, when you don't have any external motivation, and, and you don't want to perform, learning to perform under those circumstances helps create consistency. And it's that consistency, again, that's going to take you to the next level. Do you have advice for people who are trying to learn? What do you think about being consistent and working through those difficult moments? 
you have any interesting stories to share with people here on the channel? Whenever you leave comments, especially cool stories, I think it really helps other people. Lots of people read the comments and I think I've said this before, but if you think about it, if you post a comment and it gets say 15 likes, think about how many people read that comment. You know, I compare it to a video. If I post a video and it's, it's an average video, you know, it, it will get a lot of likes, but it could get thousands of views for only a few hundred likes. So, you know, if your comment gets 50 likes, that's, that could be several hundred people in the world that read your comment, right? Several hundred people in the world benefited from your story or were inspired. Anyways, get out there and keep learning. Don't give up.